Welcome everybody to our weekly Essential Island Living Builders Team Call. Hey Hazel. Hey everybody. It's so nice to see you guys. Um, we are going to go ahead and get started. So before we do, please grab your the oil that's calling to you tonight. I'm pepping it up. Okay, repeat after me if you want. I'm doing the best that I can. I'm doing the best that I can. I'm doing the best that I can. Okay. All right. So tonight we are going to continue to dive into the sales guide. It actually took me a little bit to um, find the empowered success on the new website. Um, so I do like the look of it, but it's always hard to change things up and learn something new. So um, if you haven't logged on lately, uh, I encourage you to go do that. It looks a little bit different now. So for yourself, for your back office, and then that means for customers as they're, um, you know, logging in. Another tip, if you have your link generator anywhere, um, like say on your profile for anything, you want to just check that it's still active. I double checked mine and they were fine. Um, like on my link tree on my Instagram, but just if you have that anywhere or if you've sent it to people, you might want to just double check that they have a current one. Um, and it's a great way to reach out to people like, hey, doTERRA revamped their website. I wanted to make sure you had the correct link if you wanted to get started. So um, be sure to double check those link generators, uh, those personalized links, okay? All right. Um, anybody want to share any successes or challenges before we get started? Winner. Thank you guys for a second here. Nobody chomping at the bit. So it is definitely, I'm, I don't know how you guys are feeling, but I'm definitely feeling summer vibes. Um, it's just everything is moving slower in my world. Uh, getting ready, getting out the door. Um, and so, you know, summer is typically uh, a slower time for business. I think we're very, very uh, blessed by doTERRA this month to have the 200 PV promo. Uh, that was pretty unusual. And then also for those of you that enrolled people last month uh, with 100 PV order, they have just a few more days to take advantage of the free um, lifelong vitality pack. So if they haven't taken advantage of that, uh, you might want to encourage them to do so. And somebody said this to me, and it's actually not a bad idea. If your customer doesn't want to take advantage of it, you might ask them if they want to let you take advantage of it for two reasons. One, you get a free lifelong vitality pack. So even at your price, it's $80, okay, to spend 100 PV. But you also make the commission. So if it's 100 PV LRP, you will make 20% commission plus you'll get the free lifelong vitality pack. And say if you wanted to or needed to do the 200 PV, you could get the freebies if you didn't already. So definitely not necessary. But if you find yourself needing to buy some product, if the volume helps you, if you want some extra lifelong vitality and you want to make the commission, um, you know, you can totally, totally consider that as well. Okay. Um, we are gearing up for July. 
Uh, anybody have any reflections on June? Anybody? Successes, challenges? No? Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and dive in. In July, we can anticipate BOGOs. Okay, I'm just going to throw that out there, that BOGOs are a coming. Um, um, I wanted to look at the calendar real quick and tell you guys what week I anticipate it being. I anticipate that it'll be the week of July 22nd to the 26th. Okay. If everything historically goes the way doTERRA has always functioned, BOGOs will be in July and it'll always be the last full week of the month after the 15th because they don't do BOGOs and, you know, let people take advantage of the product of the month. So we're going to kind of operate that that's happening. And as we get more into this month, then, um, then we will start planning, planning for that. Tonight we'll be staying on and uh, discussing the class dates for the month. I have the class um, scheduled our builders brunch on the 21st. We move the time back just a little bit to 11 a.m. I'm going to redo the um, vision boarding event that we did. Uh, I can't remember when we did it, but I'm going to have that at Friends and Fair on Friday. July 26th. And then the first weekend of August, I'm also planning a back to school event at Friends and Fair as well. So, um, and I know that those are all Maui events. So those of you guys that are off island, if there's an online class that you want me to do that you feel, you know, via Zoom that you feel confident that you guys can get even one or two people on, I will work with you for that. And I'm happy to come up to Wahutu. Kanan was just there. She did a lunch and learn at CPK. I know it was kind of last minute, but it was a really successful class. So we're willing to come up there and support you guys. You guys are not all on your own. So just keep me posted, okay? Uh, just talk directly with me about that. If, that's, if you have an idea for an online class that you want to have, a date, a time that works for you and you think a lot of your people or if you want uh, me to come up to Oahu and help support you guys there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So let me get, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, ditching Switch campaign is still going strong. So if you're on Facebook, please, please, please uh, help and comment on those posts. Just, it helps to get up engagement. And if you have any other ideas, of those products so i'm not gonna lie i had a hard time finding this and i wanted to tell you guys that i had to come down here to the bottom and there is now a whole business resource section so then this is where i found the empowered success all right and then um under essential oil resources here are the ebooks the online oil oasis which fyi i just taped one of these for doTERRA so look forward to my island, I'm sorry, my online oil oasis class coming, coming to you soon. Okay, so we have covered the doTERRA way, pages two and three of the sales guide. Uh, we have covered pages four and five where we're embracing sales. And tonight we're going to talk about um, sales essentials. So let me go ahead and get over here. I just wanted to kind of show you guys where I had to go. And um, here are the success guides all in one place. We're at the sales guide. And there is my friend. And we are at sales essentials. So here she is, everybody. I'm going to take off my... sales, there are some true essentials. The first and foremost being to listen before you sell. Successful salespeople understand that listening is a critical part of selling. Do not let the pressure of trying to make a sale distract you from learning about your customer. Remember, this is a relationship building process. Listening enables you to understand the needs of others so you can offer a solution that helps them solve their challenge. 
No matter how persuasive you are or how confident you feel about the product, not everyone will be ready to buy right away. Marketing research indicates that most sales happen between the fifth and 12th contact, so keep planting seeds and nurturing the relationship. You'll often find that allowing a person to say no today will result in them saying yes in the future. Listen to what your customer is saying and be respectful, whether they're interested in buying a product or not. Lead with listening as you use the doTERRA Wellness Pyramid to help each person you work with identify their needs and provide solutions through doTERRA products. Have each person rate themselves in each area on a scale from 1 to 10. Then ask questions to help guide their self-evaluation. You may consider asking questions like, looking at your ratings, which areas need the most support? What is your motivation behind wanting to get into more natural solutions? What would your life be like if you raised your lowest ratings? Can we create a 90-day wellness plan together? Reflect on your past interactions with salespeople. How do you feel when a salesperson does all the talking? How do you avoid talking too much so you can find out your customer's needs? Take a moment to fill out the workbook activity on page six of the sales guide. Thoughtful listening leads to providing solutions. In the words of wellness advocate Melody Watts, when you focus on your customer's needs, your ability to open them up to doTERRA increases. Become masterful at asking great questions. The more you understand them, the easier it is to find the solution that suits their needs. Selling doTERRA products offers hope by providing natural solutions to people's health challenges. There are people searching for exactly what you have to offer, and your job is to connect those people to solutions and help them see how their lives can improve. It is also essential that you use powerful language. For example, I sell essential oils is less effective than I help women become the best versions of themselves by using natural solutions to improve energy, sleep, and wellness. Many people sell essential oils, but you're providing a complete wellness lifestyle. If you would like more examples of scripts that use powerful language, you can find them on page seven of the sales guide. All right. Let me figure out how to get out of here. Okay, so um, looking at page six, and I have to say, those of you that were, a couple of you guys were at our class this last weekend, and um, I, did, I did kind of lead with this uh, wellness pyramid, and I did, I did really like leading with the wellness pyramid because I think it gives people an opportunity to sort of self-reflect where they're at on each level. What I didn't do well was come back to it at the end and have them really think about the products that we shared and how they could support them. And then maybe even honing in and focusing on one area. So um, always a work in progress. But I think that this idea of active listening is so critical in everything that we do in life and all of our relationships and doTERRA is a relationship business. And so, um, we always want to seek first to understand before we attempt to be understood by understanding where our customers are at and what their needs are in their life, um, is going to help us serve them and show up for them and, um, offer them the best, uh, products for them. And, like an example that I have just off the top of my head was from this class, which first of all, I did give her a shout out on Facebook, but Tasha totally helped me out uh, with this one customer. One question she asked me was, um, what was the difference between doTERRA and Young Living? And then it, this class really was a final push for the daily habits kit. But once I got to talking to her, I kind of recognized that she, although I believe everybody needs to be on the lifelong vitality pack, uh, it where she was ready to start lied more with the oils. And so she ended up getting a home essentials kit. And so, you know, listening just enables us to understand the needs of others so that we can offer solutions that help them solve their challenges. And one of the things that I kind of regret is not really 
presenting her more with the natural solutions kit because that would have been the perfect kit for her um, and her husband uh, to meet you know all of their their current concerns but so no matter how persuasive you are or how confident you feel about the product not everybody's going to be ready to buy right away and we say this all the time that a no now is not a no forever and i don't know if you guys saw i just posted this on in our facebook biz group as well this week you know a friend who reached out after i mean i must have texted her i don't know literally once a month for the last two years um you know the promos are inviting to a class and no response and she finally out of the blue reached out to me kind of sounds like she's interested in the business i haven't closed her yet but um just the fact that her text literally said like you know how to just keep planting the seeds and i knew that i didn't want to tell you to stop texting me for a reason so you know a lot of research indicates that most sales happen between the fifth and twelfth contact so keep planting the seeds and nurturing that relationship when somebody says no it does not mean a no forever but you just have to continue to listen what they say and be respectful whether they're interested in buying a product or not um so Go ahead and look at, I'm not going to necessarily, I mean, if you guys want to rate yourself in each area, you can. Um, but I think that going through this, many of us were at the uh, Healthy Habits Tour, which is what they had us do as well. And uh, But what you want to be able to do is successfully guide someone through the act of um, reflecting on each of these areas and rating themselves and then asking questions like which areas do you feel need the most support what was your motivation behind wanting to get into more natural solutions or attending this class or learning more can we create a 90-day wellness plan together what would you like uh, your life be like if you raised your lowest ratings so when we are selling doTERRA products, we're really offering hope to people by providing them with natural solutions to help them meet their specific challenges. These are people searching for exactly what you have to offer. And our job is to simply connect those people to solutions and help them see how their lives can improve. Um, I also think that with this kind of goes the idea of how they can benefit the most through a wholesale membership. Um, I think that a lot of times people are like, no, 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 I'll just buy from you. They think they're actually helping you more that way. And so I, I think it's just really important to remember that while we're helping uh, people find natural solutions, we're also helping them see the value of a membership. And I, um, a perfect example is a friend of mine who just went on a trip internationally and she wanted a couple of things right away before the trip and rather than letting her pay them pay me for them i just gave them to her so it was a terra shield spray peppermint um oil digestion oil and on guard spray and rather than having her pay them for me i just gave them to her she just got back from her trip so she ordered them all and and then she added an on guard so her order was 100 pv and I helped her get her own account. And so we do this a lot, right? They'll want it right now. And what we could say to them is, no problem. I'll give you the oils right now. And then when you get back, we'll set you up with a wholesale membership so that you can pay uh, the wholesale price for the oils. So, um, all right. When you focus on your customer's needs, your ability to open them up to doTERRA increases. Become masterful at asking great questions. The more you understand them, the easier it is to find the solutions that suit their needs. And this is the quote that they shared in the video. So this is our actually our only time that we're going to reflect tonight. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it. But I want to ask you guys to do one thing, okay? Because I feel like this week's reflection is kind of similar to last week's, what we did um, with the things that we liked the salesperson to do and we didn't like them. I want you to take a look at this next page, the Using Powerful Language page. And I want you to think about the language that you use now 
and maybe choose one of these that you think is more effective that you're going to try to start incorporating into your verbiage, okay? Because you don't want to tackle all of these, um, you don't want to tackle all these statements right away. You want to really hone in and perfect one of these statements and then keep continuing to work on all aspects of your sale from you know the beginning, the inviting all the way to the close. So um, for tonight, if you could just go ahead and do this reflection piece and then start looking at the using powerful language section and think about uh, one aspect of what you're doing now that's maybe effective and one that's not as effective that you're gonna kind of um, uh, modify and revise a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself and give us a little bit of time to work. And if you don't have the um, sales guide here, here it is right here. Okay. Oh, I didn't actually mute myself, did I? I hope I didn't make any weird noises. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, does anybody want to share 
just real quick uh, on the reflection part on page six, you know, how do you feel when a salesperson does all the talking or how do you avoid talking so much, uh, so too much so that you can find out your customer's needs? Just go ahead and unmute yourself if you're willing to share. Uh, I think when someone's talking too much, it kind of feels not genuine, it's ingenuine, and they're pulling out of all their tricks out of their bag, and <laughs> it's just not um, personalized. And then the second part, how do you avoid talking too much so you can find out your customer's needs? I'm not really sure yet how to avoid talking too much. That's kind of... <laughs> If you know me, it's one of my areas. I probably need to work on. See, you know me. That's all. <laughs> I feel like I am genuine, but I talk too much because I feel like they have to know. They have to know that I gotta tell them this story. Like it's a really good. Like I don't know. I they gotta know this experience. So I'm sure it's annoying. <laughs> but that's the teacher in us, though. I think. I mean, it's the same challenge we have in the classroom, right? Letting the kids kind of come to their own conclusions and understandings versus feeling the need to be like the purveyor of all knowledge, you know, because duh, we have it, right? <laughs> Thanks, Hazel. I feel overwhelmed when somebody starts talking at me just nonstop. Um, instead of letting me sell myself on what they're saying, they just keep, I feel like they're selling me. Like Hazel said, just pulling out all their tricks, you know, and then it makes me feel like I want to just shut down. It's like, okay, I'm just listening to them go like that, you know, um, as far as um, avoiding talking too much, just asking questions um, and listening. And a trick is to repeat back to them what they're saying so that you can, get more of a relationship and a, um, um, I guess a connection to letting them know that you hear what they're, they're talking about. Thanks mom. That's mentoring 101 right there. Those, I'm sorry, I can't help but make all these connections to teaching and education, but, um, Definitely asking questions and then paraphrasing and clarifying uh, for yourself, but also for them so that you're clear about what they're sharing and that they feel like you've heard them too, right? When you're, when you're paraphrasing and clarifying, you've had to have listened to what they said in order to do that effectively. So anybody else? I just, um, I think that, like um, remembering their name is really important. And then at the ending being like, thank you, Liza, um, for your time. Let me know if you're interested. I think that makes it super personable and people like, are like, wow, she remembered my name and she's not just selling me stuff, she's, she's actually knowing me. So I think that's important. I love that T, absolutely. And I think, I think living here in Hawaii too, that is something that's, I mean, I could see that, but, you know, our culture is to be so open and aloha. And, and so I think that it's very much um, a way of showing, like, you're important, like, you matter. You're not just, like, a number or a sale or something. Yeah, that's so good. And I'm, I'm honestly terrible with names. I'll tell you guys, one of the things I, I'm not, I'm not that horrible, but I can be horrible. But one of the things I hate the most is when I see people that are on our team that know me because they see me in videos and stuff, but I've never actually met them personally. That is like the worst. I'll be like, people be like, Hey, Liza. So I was like, who's that mom? I'm like, I think they're on my oil team. But I, you know, the team's grown so much, you know, so people see me on these videos and stuff, but um, such great advice. Anything else? Okay. I mean, I feel like that base, you know, when a salesperson does all the talking, you just feel like uh, they aren't interested in who you are and what you really need, but they just want to lock you down. Right. So um, it's, it's, fair to say that nobody likes the feeling of that. So when we look at um, page seven and the using powerful language, 
was there any of those phrases that really like you felt like wow I do that and I want to work on that um were there any of the phrases that um on the more effective side that you are already using and are there any parts of the sales journey where you're still feeling like you need support and refinement I'll go ahead and mute myself and then hi Rai um and then go ahead and jump on anybody I got to say I I know it's more effective the first one I sell essential oils and it's more effective I help women become the best versions of themselves by using natural solutions I mean I can't even say it without laughing I'm it just does sorry it just um we want to say those kinds of things, but I don't think I would use those. I don't think I'd say it in that sentence. You know, it's just, it's a, it's a mouthful to begin with, but I don't know that too many, even if somebody were saying that to me, I kind of feel like, uh, that doesn't feel real. I don't know why somebody help me with that. <laughs> I say, I like to say, um, I'm a wellness advocate, <laughs> but like, it really um, gets their listening. Like when, when they, it gets them listening when you're like, I'm a wellness advocate. Like I like to help people get healthy. And I guess it's just all personal style. Like I wouldn't say I help women become the best versions because that's totally not <laughs> me. <laughs> but I feel you. No, I like that. I, I, I like what you just said. It's succinct. It's engaging. It's kind of like, oh, tell me more. Yeah, I like that. Thanks, T. I think that actually does engage them in, well, what is a wellness advocate? What does a wellness advocate do? This is actually, though, the part that I, this is not, I don't ever say I sell essential oils. I typically will say I share essential oils. I don't say I sell them. But um, this is definitely one where I need to, like, refine. Like, especially as I'm really transitioning into this being more of, where I'm supporting my family than my day job, I feel like I need to be, I need to find that sentence that really feels authentic and real and, um, and personal from me. So I don't know what it is yet, but that's the one I started. Like I got to really nail down. Like when somebody asked me what I do and I have to do it without feeling uncomfortable. Like if you ask me and, and when people ask me, I still lead with, I'm a, I'm a teacher. I still lead with that. And it's safe and it's comfortable and honestly it feels less judgy like i it feels like i don't have to worry about them judging me like being a teacher is kind of an admirable job right but then when i start to say you know i i share essential oils with doctor i mean even like right now with just talking to you guys like i really have to be like this is what i do because i am proud of it but it's still it's still a work in progress Anybody I just want to say, I think, I, I just want to say, I think they call it the elevator, um, your elevator speech. Your elevator speech. That's right. Yeah. You know, what's good about you saying that you're a teacher is that you're, it, it um, opens up the door to let them know, like, I'm not trying to sell this to you to get money. I'm, I'm letting you know, like, I'm a teacher, but I'm also like a wellness advocate. I also sell oils to help women be healthy. I think that's good. I've definitely leaned into the educator part because I think that's why I love doTERRA because it is education because I've said this before a lot in the past. Like I am a lover of all things commercial. I am a consumer. Give me all the leggings when they were hot. Give me all the bags. Give me all the jewelry. I will buy it all. <laughs> so, but I think with doTERRA, what was different for me was that it made a difference in the life, you know, in the health and wellness of my family. And there was this education component about it. And so I definitely lean into that. So I think I just need to take that and, you know, intertwine them, right? I'm a public school educator and I educate people on how to incorporate essential oils, you know, effectively into their lives. There you go. Boom. Done. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Kate, I think you wanted to share something. Yeah, so um, the second one on the list that you don't have to buy anything, I feel like when I first started, I probably was guilty of saying that because 
it was weird for me to be selling something. Um, and so when I invited people to classes, it would be like, oh yeah, you can come, you can come just to learn. You don't have to buy anything. Um, because that made me feel safer. Um, and that, you know, reading this reminded me of something else I read along the same lines where you, when you're inviting people to classes, you're inviting them to, to learn. And then if um, they do ask about purchasing, because now I just put it out there, you're invited. I'd love for you to come join us to learn more about blah, 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 natural solutions to help you. And um, if they, you know, ask or mention something about purchasing now, I'll just say, there, you, you have the opportunity to purchase, purchase something um, and we can talk about membership and the best way to buy things. So I feel like I've refined the way I speak about it over time in a way that I still feel comfortable doing it. I don't feel pushy, but I'm just offering that information and always offering um, the best way to get the oils for the cheapest amount of money. Because so I feel like that's one of my goals always when someone starts is I want to get them with oils and I want them to get a good deal and get what they need for their family and themselves. So just seeing that kind of reminded me of my own journey and how I have um, explained it over time it has changed. And I think to all these more effective sayings, some of them, of course, are not going to sound natural. Like, I don't think I can see Hazel saying some of these things. <laughs> Um, or even myself, but I think you have to personalize it. Like you have to say, these are great templates, but you can kind of change it up and make it sound um, just not so salesy, but inviting and really offering that natural solution for whatever issues they're having. I don't think I catch myself saying I sell oils too much. I start off with, yeah, I use oils and um, to help pay for them because they ain't cheap. And I tell people straight up is I do sell them on the side or I wait for them. Um, I had this conversation before, Liza, where um, just I've, I've done the 31 bags. I've done coffee. I've been a part of multi-market things. So I kind of lean back and back off of being too aggressive because I don't want people to go, Oh, it's just another one of Hazel's things, you know? And so when I share on Instagram, I try to just spit out how like, Oh, this is what I'm using. You know, we're coughing or this kid was sick instead of the sale part first, just the experience part first. So I try to share that um, I'm a user first because I feel like I want people to, um, like like they mentioned at Healthy Habits, they're going to trust you before they trust the product. And so that whole relationship thing, they won't be convinced. Like they, they can't see what works in like just first use or some can. But um, I really believe that, yeah, they'll trust you before they trust the products. I want to make sure that I earn that. You know, they're watching my stories and they're seeing that, oh, okay, it's not just some kind of gimmick. And I'm putting that sales piece last, but um, I'm trying, trying to say, I get my oils paid for and I want more, I want more. It's possible. It totally is. I love that connection. And I know you did the strengths finder. Do you know off the top of your head what your five strengths are, Hazel? Is influencer one of them? Uh, I'll find it. I'll find okay. It. Yeah, yeah, she does have one of hers is an influencing one. I don't remember. Okay. Which it is, but it's, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I love how Kate's like, I know. Yes, I know. one is. <laughs> I want to, I want to give you just a little bit of feedback though, because um, I think we all fall into this, this, um, oh, I don't know how to say this. You know, everybody looks at, money and the cost of things differently like what somebody will like i'll go out of my way to spend a dollar at target but then i'll easily blow i don't even want to say how much I, you know something else that's worth it's and meaningless so when we talk about um our the oils we we want people to see the value like even though people go but your oil is so much more expensive than that other bottle that i can get over here we want them to see the value of what they're getting in terms of quality and purity so um maybe with 
you know, we don't want to say like our oils are expensive, but that they're worth like the, like build value in them comparative to other oils that exist out there. Because it is true. I mean, the dollar oils at, at Target aren't going to give you the same therapeutic, you know, effects and everything. So, and I think that that was something that I started, I had like for the first two years, I always just sold the smallest kit. And I would say to people, I know they're expensive, but you know, and I've over time gotten to realize they do cost more, but they're worth it. And the value is there in terms of the quality. So now it's really nice. I don't have those same like beliefs or limiting beliefs almost about the price point of them because I know what people are getting when they get what they get those bottles. So, um, yeah, thanks for sharing. Anybody else with this powerful language? I just wanted to say um, real quick that um, I think when we, um, I, I sometimes forget that people are really listening to the things that I say. And when I, <laughs> I know. Sorry, am I, I'm not muted. <laughs> no, it sounds bad. But I, I've said it in the past and how I ended up doing this class on Oahu and it made me really think is I've said it where I'm a wellness advocate and I teach health and wellness classes on the weekends. And I've said that a few times, like, oh, I do this part time. I teach health and wellness classes on the weekends or blah, blah, blah. So when I went to Oahu, um, this guy contacted me who is actually my husband's friend and he's like hey i know you said you do wellness classes on the weekends are you doing one now that you're up here this weekend and i was like oh yeah i'm totally doing one yeah so i knew i wanted to do it but because someone actually paid attention to what i say and like what i post or what i text he like held me accountable like oh you're here on oahu are you doing a class, you know? So I feel like the more we say these things and present ourselves this way in a manner of like, we're all about health and wellness. We're all about helping you and educating you and teaching you. Um, they, they remember that, like it sticks with them and they want to know more and they show up to CPK. <laughs> So I just wanted to say that the words are really, really powerful. And I, um, it made me think a lot about that when I could reflect this weekend. And I just want to give, I mean, you know, we are all where we're at in this journey. And I think the game of comparison is one of the most crippling things that we do to ourselves. And, you know, we read all the quotes about it. You know, comparison is the... Um, the thief of joy and all of that kind of stuff. And it's true, but it's really inevitable. I mean, it's really hard to avoid. And so, you know, when, when I, I, I don't, I'm prefacing what I'm about to say about Kanani because we're all where we are in this journey, but I just am so like, you went up there for your kids tournament. I know it was super crazy and you just hustled the shit out of your trip like you really made it work for you and found the balance between family but still getting doTERRA done and it just it goes to show that it doesn't matter how busy you are that you can make the time you know you can make the time to do this business and I don't know how much time you spent but I think majority of it was with your family and baseball and devoted to that but you still locked down what two three enrollments up there with one more on the way i think yeah and did that guy end up enrolling too he, oh wait oh he so. just texted me that he's trying to decide on a kit because i i made sure to scan him before i jumped on a plane <laughs> <laughs> so um just really you know a, a reminder i mean i don't know if you guys saw my post about tasha but like sister put me to shame in my own class Chick rolled up to me. What's the difference between young lady and doTERRA? I was like, is she really asking me this right now? Like, I've never actually had anybody legit. I've only had people tell me straight up, like, young living is better than doTERRA. And I'm just like, I don't engage, right? Like, I just, okay, that's great. You know, I love my oils, you know. So, um, Tasha totally had a way better answer than I did. 
So I think it's just really a constant reminder of how we all are growing and evolving no matter where we're at in this business. And that this, this sales thing, I don't know, does anybody feel like confident at sales on this call? Yeah, no. My mom kind of wants to raise her hand because at some point in her life, that was her life. But, you know, so we just have to kind of embrace the ugly, the good, the bad, the ugly, the, the, the weird feelings, the icky feelings, wherever we're at. And we have to develop what feels pure, like real authentic for us, you know, um, and that's different for each of us on this call. So as you're looking at these, um, you know, powerful language statements, just think about what their message is that they're trying to, you know, um, Share. You need to have elevator speech. When people ask you what you do, you have to be willing and confident to share about doTERRA. Because if you're not, you better kind of revisit your why. Um, you have to be, like Kate shared, you have to be willing to evolve in your comfort level of asking people to buy something, right? Or asking them to be open to the option of buying something. Um, we want to, you know, make sure that we know how to address people's objections without diminishing the product or the value of what we have to offer. And, um, and then this last one, I never say let's book an appointment, but I still struggle with that whole follow up, like how to really ask them to have a membership overview. Even that seems kind of tricky. Now I, I feel like I've just refined it by saying, I want to meet with you so that you know all of the benefits that your doTERRA wholesale membership provides you. So I kind of like leave out membership overview, live guide, all of those words. And I just say, I want to meet to give you your free welcome gift and to make sure that you know what your doTERRA wholesale membership provides you. So just some suggestions. Um, anybody else have anything to share before we wrap it up for the night? Oops. Just drop my bag. No? Mom? I think we should all work on an elevator speech. And I, you had some great oh. points that you were just bringing up on all this. Everybody had some great stuff. Um, definitely not diminish the value of the, the product. Um, Kate's evolving to the comfort level of asking for the sale you saying that we need to work in our elevator speech um, and um, you know, putting up where we put out what we say that we're going to do like um, Kanani. So really I good love that. Tonight. That's wait, am I? <clears throat> oh no. I love that. I think, can we all agree that we're going to work on our elevator speech? And even if you don't feel comfortable sharing it like aloud on camera, maybe everybody would be willing to like type theirs in or text it to me just so that I can share. Because I think that that will help everyone. I mean, that's really your attention getter. I love uh, Kanani's is basically, I, I teach health and wellness classes on the weekends. That That's yours, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I teach health and wellness classes on the weekends. So, you know, just think of your two to three sentence really max of when somebody asks you what you do. And if it, that incorporates your, you know, um, your other, your fitness profession, your, you know, your, your lactation cookies, your jewelry, whatever that encompasses, it can all be in one. So I'm going to work on one that sort of relays, you know, what, both of my passions, which is teaching and doTERRA. So let's all agree to work on that uh, for next week. And um, thanks for the action item, mom. Anything else? I feel like I don't have any announcements. Um, but next week, I'm sure we will just because we'll be going, uh, July will be starting. Be on the lookout for the promo. Don't forget tomorrow is the very last day for Healthy Habits Enrollment Kit. And um, to buy it as a wellness advocate at that 20% off price. I'm pretty sure it was the 27th was the last day. A um, couple more days to get the... Uh, 200 PV promo. So it's a great time to follow up with people that have shown interest about both or and or either of those promotions. If you had anybody that enrolled last month with the 100 PV order, please be sure to follow up with them and see if they want to take advantage of getting their lifelong vitality pack. 
and uh, Ditch and Switch is going strong on Facebook. So please, please, please keep it that way by going and commenting and participating on some of those posts, liking them and commenting. Kate, did you just read that? Um, earlier this afternoon, I saw you post something about a silver club. Yes. What, did you get any more details about that? Well, all of the details on Silver Club are in that post that I got so far. So basically, Silver Club, if those of you, um, okay, so there's Diamond Club. doTERRA has Diamond Club, and Diamond Club is basically, there are a bunch of, I want to say requirements to completing Diamond Club, which is, uh, teaching so many classes, having so many people attend, having so many enrollments, not just personal enrollments, but enrollments for your whole team. Um, but that requires traveling, Diamond Club does. Like you literally need to go, which is really, I think, difficult in Hawaii. But uh, they're starting, they're piloting something new called Silver Club. Uh, it's in the piloting phase. So those of us, those diamonds, uh, doTERRA is doing a diamond retreat in Utah in July. They're doing two of them. So I'm going to the first one, July 10th and 11th. And um, only the diamonds that are attending the retreat could ask one person on their team to participate in this pilot of Silver Club. And the requirements were that they had to have two personal enrollments this month. And they could only, and they have to be a director, uh, executive, elite, or premier. They could never have hit silver before, okay? And so um, I asked Tasha if she was interested in participating, and she is. And so she's going to um, be, I guess, our team guinea pig for Silver Club. But it's kind of awesome. They haven't rolled out all the details yet, but they did roll out some. Basically, next month, she needs to, she has to host a minimum amount of classes, but that could be classes that I host at my house, one-on-ones that she has, her own classes, the classes that her team has. Uh, I think in the first month, she has to have five enrollments, but three of them have to be personal and two would have to be uh, from people that she's personally enrolled. The following two months after that is nine enrollments. But again, I think four, three or four of them are her personal enrollments. Mm -hmm. And then the idea is that she is also helping her team to uh, personally enroll. So T is one of her sister. T is one of her frontline builders. And then she just launched a new uh, builder, Megan. And she also enrolled someone this month who said he was interested in building. So she has all of these other people to work with. Now, one of the incentives, so there's a whole bunch of prizes that she can be eligible for to win. But another incentive is that um, just like with Diamond Club, when somebody enrolls with Tasha or some, like if Tasha's event is at my house, even if that person enrolls directly under me, they're still eligible for like a free oil. Uh, it's like an extra incentive to enroll at like a silver club event. So I'm not totally sure on all of the details. So this is something that Dota is piloting so that they can roll out their saying in 2020 to be eligible for anyone to participate just like in uh, Diamond Club. So that's pretty much all I have. Tosh, do you remember any other details I left out from that post today? I feel like that's basically it. But really, it's just they're incentivizing builders um, to really launch their businesses. So if you're at a beginning phase of your business and you've never hit, or even like Premier, but you can never have hit silver before, that's the trick. Um, Diamond Club is something that you might, you might want to consider, I'm sorry, Silver Club is something you might want to consider um, in the future when it does launch. So, and if, and if it's not something you're eligible for, then it's definitely something that you might want to encourage your people for. And Tasha was like, I'm nervous. And I'm like, listen, you have nothing to lose. I mean, you either fulfill the requirements or you don't, but either way, it's a great experience and it helps you to really dig deep and push hard for your business. And I mean, sister has four enrollments already this month. She's been killing it with the healthy habits um, kit. So um, I know she's hoping they make that a permanent enrollment kit. But, um, but yeah, so I'm just super excited to uh, 
have gotten to, cho- you know, have chose somebody to do that uh, so that we have first I had an experience with it on our team so that as other people decide to do that, then we can help support them with that. So, yeah. Anything else? Okay, so let's take our pick real quick. Hazel and I just discovered that we are legitimately soul sisters based on our strengths. I think we have like four out of the five same top strengths. Yeah. She has four influencing strengths and I have three out of my five <laughs> influencing strengths. So kind of crazy. Okay. I'm, oh, thanks team for coming back for the pick. Okay. Wait, my thing is dirty. Hold on. I gotta get it clear. All right, here we go. Oh, there we go. Crystal clear. Okay. Love it. All right, everybody, as always, thank you so much for showing up for yourselves, for your businesses, for your teams. Um, This is incredible. I just feel like this keeps growing and growing. So invite people to these. Invite people that are curious about the business. Um, You know, it might be a little overwhelming, but I think also by them seeing our community of what we have to offer, the support and everything, it's really encouraging. So as you guys continue to uh, build and seek out people that might be interested in the business, please invite them to join us on one of our calls to kind of check it out and see what it's all about. We will see you next month in July. How is that even possible? And I'm really looking forward to another amazing month. So, but we still got a couple days this month. So go finish strong and um, we'll see you guys all next week. Bye.